So in this video, we're gonna be revamping this engine with new carburetor, or newish to me, and doing valve covers, painting the valve covers, and getting all the unnecessary stuff out of the engine that we don't need when we put this uh, new carburetor on. And here's a little sneak peek of what it's gonna look like. So if you're interested in this build, keep watching. And if you're not, hey, maybe you'll change your mind. But you gotta first watch this video. It's got all my parts picked up. Got my thermostat, spark plugs, cap and rotor, spark plug wire set, valve cover gaskets, exhaust manifold gaskets, fuel filter, fuel line. I even got I even got a used carburetor, but it, it is a good one. 650 CFM, I believe. And you know, parts cleaner. A little blue paint to go and paint the valve uh, the valve covers. I was gonna get a new distributor with just HEI and none of this other stuff that runs off the computer over there. But in the end, I didn't wanna spend money on something that was cheap and not outlast this thing that lasted for 40 years or so. So I'm just gonna leave that. But I'm gonna get everything off of this. I'm gonna try and delete as much of this stuff as I possibly can. I'm gonna delete all these little hoses here for the EGR or whatever. And it's just gonna be straight carbureted because it's not gonna need anything special. So let's get to it, guys. So for now, I'm gonna actually dump all the water out. Luckily, it's just water and it's been tested and, and it doesn't leak or anything. So we're just gonna dump the water out and then I've gotta go down and go get some coolant. I should have bought coolant. Yep. Uh, but I'm gonna go get coolant and we'll put it in here. But that'll probably be the last thing. But I do want to get this off so just in case when I'm working and ripping everything else apart up here that nothing's going to start gushing everywhere and I don't want that. I'm going to go ahead and pop the blower hose off and just let it go everywhere. It's just water. Now I'm gonna actually go through and check compression on this thing and take all the spark plugs out and see where we're going from there. I wanna see what compression I have because I just wanna make sure it's, uh, it looks good and everything. So these things are just like hand tight, these spark plugs, these, or at least the first two that I just started, they are just hand tight. Let's see how we go with this third one. Yeah, that that just fell with ease. Yeah, that's better than it being locked up, so can't really complain about all that. Okay, let's check this, see how this one's gonna look. Yep. I mean it was it was snug. That was about it. It was just snug. Alright, cool. Makes it easier to get these things off and then not being seized on, so hey. Well, it is a possibility these things are running a little rich. A little black there, but. All right, got the first four coming out. One looked like it had a little blow by, like on the side here, like on the side right there, compared to the other ones. These look like the expensive ones too. This has got the four tip spark plug. I'm wondering now if I should just clean these up and and roll with them, but because I don't know how old these are, because judging by it, it looks kind of like it was replaced about the same time they were trying to do something with the radiator. So, but we'll see. I might even clean these wires up. I'll ohm these out and see if I've got good resistance across it and that it's got continuity. So.
now that I got the compression test done, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get both of the exhaust manifolds off on both sides. So I'm probably gonna cut it right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna delete that welder on up around in here. I believe that's the air pump. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that too. That thing's locked up. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna delete that. Take it on out. But I guess I'll go ahead and spray all these things down. And if it makes my life easier, yeah, I'll probably just cut this thing out of the way. Got this great little opening to get to these exhaust bolts here too. Uh, that's different than the other side because it's got four tubes per each cylinder. This side just has two cylinders here. Two pipes running off of just two cylinders on this side. Well, did you look at that? So on this side, the manifold actually moves. Or this, <laughs> that bolt ain't even in there. Huh, go figure. Great, we got a broke bolt, guys. Woo, that's probably where our noise was coming from. I have to get myself some exhaust manifold bolts. stud came out on this side Looks like I might have to end up doing some brake lines on this thing. Somebody put unions in here and those do not look good at all. We're down to the last little thing here, which is this little lever. Oh, good, it came off. Get this little vacuum actuated lever out of the way. This thing. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it. All right, guys, there's no turning back. How am I gonna cut this one off? Gotta cut up both ends. This thing could just come right on out. Do we need these? No, we don't. We do not need these. We are gonna get these out.
We need more power in here, guys. More power. Will it add more power? Yeah, sure. It'll probably add two more horsepower, guys. Gotta be careful of that thing. doesn't even look like there was a gasket in the beginning jeez it just doesn't look like it at least I mean maybe I'm wrong maybe it's just really buried in there and rust but doesn't even look like it that's where the exhaust leak was coming from all that ash that black ash that was around here so I can get this out actually without breaking that oil Check oh, it was leaking around here also, guys. This thing's supposed to help do something. I mean, a little black pressure and heat exchange or whatever. I'm going to weld it open. Probably, I won't even cut this thing out. I'll just weld it right open. Guess we will drop it right out the bottom of the van since it's easier to do it this way. Yeah, definitely easier to drop out the bottom of the van. There it is. In all its glory. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut these things off get my welder and weld these little holes up all right guys there's our exhaust leak for sure we have a cracked manifold great I'm thinking this is cast iron and it's gonna be harder for me to do anything to it so I'll have to just go down to the junkyard and get me another one I figured there was gonna be one cracked one somewhere all right now we gotta get the other one off Let's get to that one all right, both exhaust manifolds are off. Now we're gonna go ahead and get like, this hose off because I already cut it off right there. And luckily, I think this exhaust manifold's okay. There's no cracks in it. Yeah, there's no cracks in this one. So. vacuum lines my dad would appreciate this and just ripping it all apart look guys look more vacuum lines Where the heck are they going I think that the vacuum line to it was just dry rotted right there by itself
Alright, got it all cleaned up as much as I could get it. All the dirt and crud around all the little cavities here. Now I'm going to get these valve covers off. Go clean them up and paint them up. just got back from the junkyard this is the original one obviously with the crack there and this was actually another one that I found out in the junkyard oh it's different by it does not have these little EGR weird gas thing it does not have those it has a it has a place for it but does not it's not there it cost me 15 bucks for this thing and four dollars for this like i didn't know if i was going to need it and from the looks of it i might actually need this here's the original it still works but it needed to be tuned cleaned out probably rebuilt most likely rebuilt but i wasn't going to mess with that um for the price of that and the time that i could do that i just went and got me another used one but it's as a this is a Edelbrock 650 CFM carburetor, and it's a lot easier, a whole lot simpler than this one over here. It's got a whole lot more things going on with it. This cost me $147. Got this off of Facebook Marketplace. Here's all of the vacuum lines, old vacuum lines, all the vacuum tubes. Some other crap that wasn't even needed on there that I took out took off the van and then on top of that I just got done painting these all right so now I'm ready to get the valve covers on and now I just got to get the gaskets on and then I'll be able to set the valve covers back on it Got them on. Yes, they are blue. Ooh, this uh, it looks pretty good, blue. Intake manifold's a little dirty, but hey, whatever. Whatever. This exhaust bolt was actually busted off. So now we gotta see if I can get that bolt out of there. With the welder. This thing was hard to pull through the rocks. With these tiny little wheels I kept wanting to go right into it. But man. I mean, it doesn't help that this thing was like like 100 pounds in itself, especially with that tank on the back. And so now to see if I could take this nut, put it right there, and start welding through it, seeing if I can get this thing to penetrate and hopefully come out. Now I'm kind of wondering if this is supposed to be there, right there. It looks like it's wedged in between the transmission and the block. It's like this little mount that goes and it holds the starters, wires, and everything in it. And it looks like it's got a gap. Like right there. Huh, that's weird. I can't really tell because it's caked with grease. But I'll see if I can take that thing off and put it where it's supposed to be. And not in between engine block and that. I'm hoping it's not even cracked either. <laughs> Oh jeez. Okay. Well, anyways, see if I can get this thing to to come out. <laughs> ah, that thing didn't even touch it.
All right. We got her out. Thought it was going to be a bit harder than that, but I'm glad it came out. Didn't have, I did not want to have to re-thread that thing or do something or have to do something weird just to keep this thing on here. So, and I'm just happy this thing came off. There it is, guys. That little piece that was stuck in between the transmission and the engine. I just got it out of there, and now it's just tangling here now. Now I'll have to put that on somewhere. It should be mounted right to the front of the bolt, not between the engine and the transmission, that's for sure. So I guess I'll get this bolt out and mount it in there the right way. So on, on this manifold, I actually had to drill all the studs out because they were all broken. And this one's going to be the one that replaces the cracked header on the passenger side. So I just got these carriage bolts. Nothing special. So I'm going to put the bolt on here. And then... So I've got the bolts recessed just a little bit into the nut there. And then I'm gonna actually weld just a little bit there to hold that nut on the back here. Because this one, I couldn't get a stud to go through this way. So, and I couldn't find anything that was all the way threaded. So, yeah, this is gonna work for me. Might get a little rustier than most of the other things, but hey, everything else on the van's a little rusty, so it, It'll blend in. All right, so I've got the back ends of the nuts here, basically welded to the stud. And now, I'm just gonna go get the grinder and cut all these off. Then I have a nut here that'll go and re-thread this, basically. And this makes it where I got something to hold to whenever I'm tightening it down. This is my way of fixing it. Yeah, I could have fixed it in a million other ways, but this is the cheapest that I could do it. So why not, right? All right, so I'm ready to go install these knitters now. There's the gaskets. All right, we got one header in. One more to go. We've got headers on both sides now. So, these spark plugs didn't even look too bad and they look like the ones that are like way more expensive. It's got quad tips on it for the spark plugs. So, I just cleaned off the things and I'm just probably gonna reuse these things. It was running on all eight cylinders, so I mean, they don't look too bad. So I've got the carb just kind of sitting there, but it's not gonna fit because it wants to hit that EGR block off plate basically. So I'm thinking I might need a spacer. Luckily, I found one literally two weeks ago for a quarter. It even came with the gaskets. So, I'm actually hoping this thing's gonna fit. kind of got like a it's kind of beveled there I guess that's from how the old carburetor was so put it like that I guess the gaskets up 
here. Looks like it's gonna clear that thing right there. Luckily. Actually, the carburetor, the carburetor already has a gasket on it. And now we'll see if this thing's gonna fit. Now I gotta go see if I got some bolts. Well, it looks like we got the radiator in. They just dropped it off today. I hope this thing ain't bent or anything, but it looks like it's good. FedEx dropped it off, so. And this is for the Challenger build. If you guys like to check that out, I'll put a link in the description also. So I just went down to Home Depot and picked up some bolts for the carburetor. I had to go get some longer ones because of the spacer that I had to put in here. I thought it was quarter inch 20. It was 5 16 and yeah, so I had to go run to the store twice. And that's no problem, it was just down the road. All right, all the bolts are in now. Now I'm just tightening down this, this line here for the brake booster. So now I'm gonna set up my fuel line. I got me a universal fuel filter. This thing is pretty nice. You can actually unscrew it and clean it all up, get the junk out of it, and then put it back together and actually be able to reuse this thing. That's the kind of, that's what I like about this thing. And you can see what contaminants might be going, trying to go through there. The old line here, it's a screwing kind. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go get my little pipe cutter here and and bring it around that thing. I'll cut it right there, and then I'll have a, then I'll get my fuel line and string it around, put it above here. The only thing is the transmission dipstick tube is right here, and it's like right there next to it. It's the only bad thing about it, but I'm, I'm gonna see if I can possibly push this thing out of the way or push it down just enough for the hose to go on top or the bottom, whichever. I think there's a bracket up there somewhere but anyways i'll get to that though it's pretty hard to get a pipe cutter in there cool thing is they make these really tiny ones and i'm just gonna cut it right around that pipe and it should be able to to keep going around it and not hit anything else it's a little early i don't know how much they cost but they're like 10 bucks or so so i just got my pry bar here pry it up just a little bit that hose should just be able to go right below it now. There's the other piece. This was a screw and type right into the carburetor. And there's the, basically that pipe right here. That's what I'm gonna attach the hose to. But first I gotta clean that off before I shove a hose on there. So a nice thing about this little set here, it comes with a variety of little fittings here. That way if you need like a a quarter inch or a five sixteenths or even a three eighths. Three eighths is what we're gonna need, but that's the cool thing about this little set. It'll come with the little fittings here. And it's notated in and out. This one's out, this side's in. All right, so I'm just getting a rough estimate of where I need to cut this and I've got it, and I've got it right here where I need to go. Then I'll put in a little section on the end there. Now I'm gonna get the the existing wire here that goes to the electric choke. And I gotta rewire that because this thing broke off. I gotta put a little clip here and I gotta add a ground also. Alright, got it wired up. And now I'll go ahead and get these spark plugs put in.
All right, so now I gotta get this pump put in. It's just dangling here. So, gotta get that in. The belt's a little loose, but I've gotta get a new belt and then I gotta tension it. It was this loose before, but it ran. I'm gonna leave it alone because I gotta get another belt anyways, two belts. Now I'm going to go ahead and get this cap and rotor replaced and I'm probably going to keep the old wires. So now we're on to the exhaust. This is part of it. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of this stuff here, just in case it needs to get sealed up on little pieces here, because it's it's not the it's not the smoothest here. It looks like, but we'll run with it, guys. I got myself some vacuum line and PCV hose. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook some of this stuff up before we get to the linkage on the carburetor. All right, got my PCV hooked up here. Now I just gotta get this vacuum line to the distributor for the vacuum advance hooked up now. All right guys, moment of truth. We're gonna see if we can get this thing cranked over. sounds a whole lot better than it did before it'll go right through the rpms a lot easier on a curve than it did before so now i've got to get this linkage hooked up i gotta go in so here's the original carburetor and it has like this little pleat thing right here where you put a clip like this onto it for the gas pedal and so the carburetor i got actually came with one of these so i'm just gonna go ahead and place that on there so change of plans, I'm just gonna use a quarter inch 20 bolt and two lock washers instead of this thing, cause I can't go find the bolt. This is, and this is not a common nut that I have on hand, but this is, and I've done it before, used a quarter inch 20 bolt with two lock washers on it and it's it rolled out for however long, eight years. So I'll just go ahead and use this. I'm just gonna drill it out
All right, let's see what we get. If we get a gas pedal or not. Well, I might need the springs. Got myself a new set of springs. I've got to try something different because that gas pedal is a little hard to push. So, hopefully one of these combinations will work. Probably this one. Alright, got my new spring in there. Now it's not so dang hard to press that gas pedal. Now to put the cherry on top. And now we'll go ahead and get this air cleaner put on. It's the cherry on top, guys. Man, just look at it. Would you just look at that? It's so clean. I gotta get a different size bolt here. There it is. It's looking pretty dang good. Alright, got her all bolted down. And that thing is shiny. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clean up all these wires. Tidy it all up with some zip ties. And I'll just make sure nothing's touching these headers or anything. And get everything out of the way and tucked away. So since I'm on a budget with this build... I'm going to be doing some cheap spark plug wire holders here with zip ties. And I'll show you how to do that. It only It's only going to cost about 15 cents to do. So that's pretty good on price for budget here. So what I'll do is I'll take my zip tie and I'll tie one around each spark plug wire like so. But I won't completely close it. I'll leave a little bit of a gap there. And I'll make sure I'm doing and wrapping the thing around in the same in the same manner as the other one. So they all look the same whenever you whenever I'm done. Alright, so now I've got it around. So I'm gonna do it around this one too. So I'll do it around this side right here also. And then I'll put another one in the middle like so, connecting those two zip ties together. And then I'll just tighten it up like so. Get the, get the wires arranged and then I'll tighten each other zip tie that was on it too. All the wires are not touching the headers. Then you just go ahead and you snip all the little excess stuff here off. And I did that for about 15 cent on this side and another 15 on the other side. And we're in 30 cent. This is how you save money, guys. Then if I need to replace these wires or do something to it, all I gotta do is just cut these off and it only costs about 30 cents. That's how you do something on a budget. All right, so that was it for this video. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you'd like to subscribe, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If not, hey, it's not going to hurt my feelings. I'll see you guys next time.